Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this lecture, I'm going to show you that how you can group together different rows using a list control, using a list view in Surf UI. What does that mean? Well, to better explain it, let's go ahead and check out our grocery category class. You can see that I have a grocery category class which has some sort of a title and these titles can be HEB, Walmart, Randall's, Kroger, Fiesta, basically the name of the store, the shopping store. And we also have grocery items. These are the grocery items that you want to buy from those stores. So you may want to buy, let's say, cookies and milk from HEB, but you want to buy fish and uh, fruits from Fiesta. So these grocery items will hold those values. The grocery item have title and a price. You can see that I have already created a all function in the grocery category, which is a static function. When I call this function, I will return an array of grocery categories, which has a title and some grocery items in it. So we don't have to create those items. These items are already in it in the fake data that I'm creating. Now this is a hierarchy or nesting of data. You can see that the grocery category can have a title, but a list or a array of grocery items also. The question is, how are we going to display this into our Surf UI application? Let's go ahead and jump into our Surf UI page and let's make sure that we can actually use the canvas and resize the canvas. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. There we go, perfect. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to obviously create some sort of a list. So let's go ahead and create a list. Now, the list should have something. You can also try to provide some sort of applications over here. So I'll show you the things that will may not work. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and say self.grocery categories. And I'm going to provide some sort of an ID for that so that I can differentiate between those things. And I will get access to the grocery categories in. And then let's go ahead and display the text. So grocery category dot title. Now this is just to show you that it may not work when I start creating sections. You can see that if I simply display the title, you can see that the title is being displayed. But if I go ahead and start creating section also, so let me go ahead and add the section with some sort of a content over here, some sort of uh, application. And I can actually provide it a text, which is grocery category dot title. And for the content over here, we're going to see that you're going to provide text. And text can be, let's say, milk. The first thing you will obviously notice is that the grocery category or the grocery items milk is kind of like with each other. I want it to divide it into different way, into a group section. So let's go ahead and put the grouped and call it grouped list style. Okay, so it's now showing as a group list style, but still you can see that it's kind of not working correctly. Maybe I can run a for each loop over here and get something for for the item. So let's go ahead and run the for each loop and the for each loop will be on grocery category dot grocery items and the ID that we will use will be the title and we will return the text which will be we will call it grocery item. It will be grocery item dot title. There we go. Let's go ahead and save it. You can see that it's kind of like adding it always on the side and we want it to be in inside a section. So let's go ahead and check, check out a different way of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this stuff that we have actually typed in. And instead of using the list itself, I'm going to try to use the for each this time. So for each self dot grocery categories and the second argument will be the differentiator, meaning uh, some sort of a property that differentiates between different grocery categories. Grocery category in, 
And now we can actually go ahead and create or return a section header. So let's go ahead and create a section header, section header, and then passing in the text because we want to display a text. Grocery category dot title because we want to display the title, right? And for the body of this section, let's go ahead and display nothing for now. There we go. You can actually see now it's being separated. And now we have a category HEB and Fiesta. Now these are obviously very, very small text, but the great thing is that you can easily make sure that they are large enough so that you can see them. There we go. We just change the font size to title, and now you can see the HEB and Fiesta. But we still don't really see our other things, which are the grocery items like milk and cookies and fish and fruit and all those things that we have added in our uh, dot all function of grocery category. We can run another loop over here, a sub loop, an inner loop, which is also a for each loop, which is going to go through the grocery category dot grocery items. And the ID in this case, again, we're going to use something related to the items, which is title. And we're going to get access to the grocery item. So this is the inner loop, and then we can simply print out grocery item dot title. Let's go ahead and save it. And now you can see that how easily we were able to create this kind of a look and feel. So now everything is nice and grouped together. We have HEB with all the items of the HEB, and we have Fiesta with all the items of Fiesta. And we were able to achieve that in only a few lines of code. If you were using UI Kit, you already know it's a lot of lines that you have to write. You have to write sections for header and all those different things that you want to have to do. But now with Swift UI, you can achieve it in less than 10 lines of code, which is actually pretty amazing. So in this lecture, you learned that how you can create a list control and also how you can group different items together based on their categories. If you like this video and want to learn more about building Surf UI applications, then check out my course, Surf UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. As you can see, this is the highest rated course on Udemy with more than 700 students. This course is around nine plus hours and I keep on adding new content as I learn more about Surf UI development. Let's go ahead and check out some of the contents of this course. You're going to learn about creating lists and navigation. You're going to also learn how you can create your custom grid application. And then understanding state and binding, which is essential for creating Swift UI applications. Then you're going to jump into MVVM design pattern and going to create a complete weather app integrated with web APIs using MVVM design pattern. Next, you're also going to learn about property wrappers, forms, modals, and even core data integration with Swift UI and core ML integration with Swift UI. This is the best course available online on Swift UI, the complete course, and now you can get it for a very low price. Now, here's the thing. There is a link in the YouTube description which will take you to the course and the coupon will already be applied to it when you click on the link. Please use that link. If you want to buy the course, that will be great if you use that link because you can get the best price. And if you use the coupon that I'm giving you, then I need to, or I will get to keep a much higher revenue generated from that course. But you will get the best price anyways, so it will be great for both of us. Thank you so much and if you have any recommendations, for something that you want to see in Swift UI, please go ahead and write in the comments because I'm always looking for new ideas to implement for Swift UI and it will benefit everyone. Thank you so much and I really hope that you enjoy the course.